part four of the uh, handbook novice transmitter uh, we're going to be covering uh, the little HC 49U crystals and uh, how we might use these in the novice transmitter. Um, this is not a, uh, a video about crystals but I wanted to show you some of the larger crystals. Uh, this is one out of a BC 610. It's a World War II transmitter and those oscillators uh, they didn't have to be so forgiving and uh, uh, the blank that's inside this crystal is uh, is massive and especially at low frequencies it would be very difficult to damage this this particular crystal. Um, the other crystals that you might run into more commonly are these uh, HC6, 33, 17 and so on these, these crystals are a little bit larger than the HC49s. These can take a little bit more power and generally these will work okay in the uh, tube type oscillators like this. Uh, you do have to be a little more careful on 40 meters compared to 80 meters, but generally these are going to be able to take a lot more power than the HC49s. So in this uh, final video on the transmitter, uh, we'll We'll go into uh, attempting to put the HC49s inside FT243 crystal holders. Some of the holders will hold the 49s directly with no modifications whatsoever. But many of them require a Dremel tool or some other machining method to make them large enough to hold the crystal inside safely. Okay, the first thing that we're going to try is to reduce the resistor right on the grid of the oscillator. You might remember we were around 50k. It's a 47k that's gone up in value a little bit. It was around 50k. I've now put a 10k resistor directly across it, and the equivalent resistor is about 9k. So we now have 9K from grid to ground as our grid leak resistor. We're back to the FT243 at uh, 7275. So let's key this and let's see if we're getting the same amount of power out. Yep, I'm getting full power out. Um, let's go up here to the meter so we can see the current. Remember, we were on this one scale. We're going to go down to the 300 millivolt scale. So it's down to about 190 millivolts, and we were up um, just about at 275. So it has reduced the crystal current. Okay. That's a good sign. I wonder how low I could go with that value. Let me try going a little bit lower. Okay, I now have the equivalent of 5K on the grid. Let's see how that works. Output's still good. Tone's still good. And uh, we brought her down to about 160. So we're going the right direction. But I don't think I want to go any further. Let's try the... Uh, Let's try the other crystal, see if there's any improvement at all. This is 7285. Okay, that's better. Now I have uh, basically taken out the 5.5. 6k resistor and replaced it with the 10k resistor so we now have the the 9k of uh, grid resistance and I've done something another suggestion from the field to add a resistor in series with the crystal this resistor is 150 ohms Basically, it is a, a resistance that we're putting in series with one lead of the HC49 crystal. Let 
Now, the idea is uh, to limit the current going into the crystal and hopefully uh, save the crystal from, from burning up. We still have to adjust the trimmer, of course, to adjust our drive. Let's see how the, uh, the thing acts with the 10K resistor on the grid and the 150 ohms in series with the crystal. Full power output. And this is the abused crystal, the original crystal. I think we have a winner. Let's see how it dips and, and so on. But I think we have a good strategy. So inside the crystal package I'm going to be inserting a 150 ohm carbon film resistor. And we'll try this on a couple of crystals. We will reduce the grid resistor to 10K and we'll check it with both the FT243 and these little HC49U crystals and see if we've got something that's workable. Okay, this guy is 7040 kilohertz. Full output power, good note. Again, I'm just putting 150 ohm resistors in the uh, holder, as suggested by uh, a guy at the uh, ham fest that I was talking to. Good trick. Okay, I've got one more. Uh, 7055, let's try that. Seven oh five five. That one's drifting a little bit. It's going to work. A little bit of you pin it, but not bad. It's usable. So I think we have a winner here. We have a method where we can go back and forth between FT243s and uh, HC49s. Let's try another FT243. Grab a random one. This is 7115. Let's see if this one will work. Yeah, I think we got a winner here. So I'm going to declare victory. So, okay, I'm declaring victory, but not so fast. There are some anomalies that I ran into using these techniques. Lowering that grid resistor to 10K and in inserting the 150 ohm resistor in series with the crystal is giving me a good note and full output power. Maybe even a little more output power. I don't have any problem with that. However, the tuning and loading has changed. And I believe it is affecting the feedback of the oscillator to the point where we're starting to get significant loading effects in the electron coupled oscillator. That is, the plate of an electron coupled oscillator is supposed to be fairly isolated from the grid and we're not seeing that as much anymore and I think that's because we're starving the feedback 
in the grid circuit. So the coal puts oscillator is not working as well as it would have with more feedback. That said, this is a method that's allowing us to use the modern crystals in a safe manner. And maybe that was the kind of the goal of this study. We found a way to measure the current, whoop, if I plug it in, we found a, a way to measure the grid current. You know, we're here just a little over 110 millivolts, which is a significant improvement over what we had when we started, when we were up to around 300. So we've roughly cut it in a third with these techniques, uh, the, the power into the crystal. But these crystals were not designed to have this much power into them. And the fact that uh, it's working at all is uh, amazing. Now, also, here's the other thing. Because of that lack of, uh, of feedback and a strong oscillator, the tuning and dipping, especially here on 40 meters, is very tough. And it's hard to see the dip now. Before, I could just barely see it dipping. And now I can also tune it to where it, it basically, I'm able to take it off frequency. That tells me that's a tune plate, tune grid type of oscillator. So we are spoiling the electron coupled oscillator uh, by doing this stuff. But it is allowing the crystal to at least work. Does it work as well with the old fashioned FT243s? I really don't think it does. I think uh, with the old-fashioned crystals, I think it worked better with the higher grid resistor. Um, will it work? Yeah, it works. Uh, let's put this uh, 7275 in. Okay. 7275 kilohertz. Full, yeah. It's giving a lot more uh, crystal current, as you can see. I don't know. Works pretty good. But uh, the tuning and loading have definitely changed. When I started, um, the loading wanted to be, you know, up a little bit for best performance. But uh, I'm getting the peaking action with it almost fully meshed now. Not quite, not quite fully meshed on the loading, but it's getting there. Okay, this is the first contact on the HC49 crystal. Thank you. 
but it's working pretty good. Anyway, uh, in the next section I'm going to get into how to install the HC49s and the resistor into the crystal holder. And that will be the final section in this series. Now it's a fairly certain bet that the crystal, um, HC49 crystal, is just barely going to fit into the blank. And it turns out that it's a little bit too tight. And you do need to take down that middle portion just a little bit. This will allow you to bend the leads properly to get down to the contacts uh, without stressing the crystal too much. So using a Dremel tool, we're going to need to get in here and take a little bit off this edge here, right across here, on both of these blanks. I'm not going to uh, treat you to this. Uh, something you can discover on your own, because it is going to be a little bit noisy and messy. But anyway, you got to take it down a little bit in order to get the crystals to go in. Of course, if you're doing this for a living, you probably have the uh, uh, some different crystal blanks that already will accept the crystals, so you don't have to go through all this. But I'm just using what I have on hand here. Okay, so I've uh, got the crystal holder ground down so we can fit the crystal inside. The leads are formed, the leads are tinned. Um, I've got some double-sided thick uh, Scotch Extreme tape here that's going to hold the body of the crystal down into the holder so that it's uh, solid inside there. Okay, after you remove the, uh, the covers and all of the guts of the, the old FD243 crystal, uh, you'll usually have these plates that are used to uh, make contact to the, uh, to the crystal itself. You'll be cutting these right about here, leaving a little tag end of copper, and that's what you're going to be soldering to. So first you have to clip that. Um, then you'll be doing the, the Dremel dressing, uh, taking uh, material off this part, and perhaps even up on this part here in order to uh, get the crystal in there. If you don't do a good job, you're going to end up putting the crystal in kind of haphazardly like this. It's at a little angle so I could get everything to fit. You also have either a, a quarter or a half watt, 150 ohm resistor you've got to fit in there. So the crystal's got to be biased a little bit to the side in order to get the crystal in series. Now, I don't think you need to do any more if you're using the, the uh, adhesive uh, foam tape. That crystal's not going anywhere, believe me. So I would just take the cover of the, of the crystal that it came with and just put that cover right back on and, and that's the end of it. If you want to go as far as to make a label, you know, to show the, the new frequency, that's very important. Uh, you got to know what frequency the crystal's on. Um, also, when you mount the crystal, make sure that you can read the frequency, so mount it frequency side up. That's all there is to it. That's all I ended up doing. Um, nothing fancy. And uh, now I feel confident that I can use these crystals in the antique transmitters without burning them up. So in ending this video series, I wanted to let you know that even though this is a pretty dramatic power oscillator, putting out 15 watts uh, with one tube, it's not the ultimate. Um, RCA actually published a, uh, an article, and uh, as you can see, this is an 813 beam pentode one tube transmitter. That's right, a 100 watt output power crystal oscillator using the same topology. So this has been a fun series covering the Handbook Novice uh, Oscillator Transmitter that was uh, published in the, uh, the ARRL Handbook. Um, I hope that uh, you're able to uh, reconstruct one or maybe to make one from scratch, it would make a, a good project, something uh, to show that you can do what these novices did 
in the 1960s with simple equipment.